What if Galarian Zapdos was in Gen 1 OU? Now I'll be honest, I've done like over 30 of these videos so far, and out of all of them, I think this one has to be my favorite. Because Galarian Zapdos just... Out of all the videos I've done, this one just feels the most unique. Because normally, like you guys give me suggestions for like good psychic types, normal types, or just Pokemon that have just historically been really good. And Galarian and Zapdos has definitely been pretty good. Like it's underused like Borderline in Generation 8. But that's pretty much the most it's had so far, other than like whatever streaming now in Gen 9. But I don't know, it just this one just feels so unique to me. But just a fighting uh flying type that like more importantly just a fighting type that might actually be good in Gen 1. I mean obviously it's a Glorian version of Zapdos. So like you yeah, that's like a lot to move up to, you know? Because Zapdos, as you might know, is a pretty good Pokemon. And I'm just excited to get into this one. Do you think Glorian Zapdos is better than Cantonian Zapdos? Would it even be good at all? Or would it be like any other fighting type and just suck because it's a fighting type in Gen 1? Only one way to find out. Now, I'll be honest, with how fast um, Glorian Zapdos is usually like depicted, like it's literally a Roadrunner, not to mention like in the DLC it was like really annoying to catch because of how fast it was. However, um, I don't know. I, I feel like base 100 doesn't seem like and I'll just I expect it to be faster, but I think that's just because of um, how um, like power creep just been. Now it's like 105. It's like the new like standard for speed. But for Gen One, this is not the case. Base 100 speed is really good, like really good. <laughs> like I f I always forget if Taurus is base 100 attack or 110. I know one of those is like its attack stat, and the other is its speed stat. I always forget. But either way, base 100 is still really good. You're still outspeeding uh, like the vast majority of like very important Pokemon. Like, or I I'll just figure out right now. Let's see here. Looking up Tauros. Uh, base 110 speed. Okay, yeah. But yeah, you're so fast to like a uh, vast majority of stuff. Like, and either way, like even if like you ignore that, like you're just like a very good speed tier for just critting in general. And I think this is where a lot of the fighting types fall flat. Fighting types in Gen 1 either fall flat because they're frail or they're not very fast. But Champ is not very fast and also has bad fighting moves. So it unfortunately is just terrible and just dies to like any any special, especially psychic moves. Meanwhile, you got Pokemon like Hitmonlee, which they're pretty fast and they have a very consistent fighting move. But they, on the other hand, have a very bad special. So they just die instantly anyways. Zapdos doesn't suffer from any of these. It has a pretty good speed set. So while it's up that it wants to outspeed, like Snorlax and Chansey or Rhydon, it does easily. And for stuff that you hit it specially, like it doesn't matter if it's base 90 or base 85 special, it's still pretty good where you're going to be able to survive stuff. However, one issue... But also a benefit for Glorian Zapdos is its flying typing. Because Stab Drill Peck is good. Immunity to Earthquake is also good. Weaknesses to Electric and Ice, not so good. And to no one's surprise, having a psychic weakness is a big issue. However, they're not the worst things in the world. Especially with like Zapdos' move pool. Because it's pretty good. As you can imagine for a legendary Pokemon, let's get into it. Starting with agility, which I'm pretty sure all three of the legendary birds just really enjoy using agility. It just, it's just really useful for them. And you have counter, but that's pretty useless on it. Drill pig, which is good for like just pretty good stab. Does it only work on white screen or does it have dual screens? Either way, it's not the worst thing in the world. And you have low kick too, which I would argue even if you didn't give it a signature move. Low kick is just pretty usable on its own. Like, you don't not speed Tauros, but you do not speed Chansey and Snorlax, which is really good. You have Rest, but I don't think it's bulky enough to take advantage of that. And just like with Galarian Articuno, which I did yesterday, um, Galarian Zapdos will also have a signature move, Thunderous Kick, which this 
is not the strongest fighting move in uh, Generation 1 overuse. It used to be high jump kick at 85, but now we have a 90 base power fighting move with a 100% chance to lower the target's defense by 1. As you could probably imagine, this is the big deal, even for things that aren't just strictly weak 2 fighting. And other than that, that's Peck. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely going to use Peck, trust me, it's a good move. Same with Rock Smash. But other than that, I think it's just Hyper Beam. And yeah. So I didn't see Reflect, so I think it really just have. Yeah, just a white screen, which is weird. For, for our moveset, I think it's. Um, I think this one's pretty straightforward. Agility. Or not Ancient Power, Agility. Agility, because base 100 speed, it's good. But if you just have one agility off, you just outspeed everything in the metagame. And I think more importantly, if you get paralyzed, using that in order to negate your um, speed drop basically because of a glitch, I think that is really important. You really want to have that. And next up, Drill Pack. You're not going to ever really want to use this over Hyper Beam or Thunderous Kick in my opinion. Although it's good for Executor obviously. It's good if you ever do face another fighting type, like maybe like you're running one of those teams where it's like Machamp and there's like a bunch of Pokemon Spring Paralysis. I seriously doubt it, but it can come up. Executor, it obviously comes up, but the most important one is for Gengar, because obviously its other moves can't really touch it, so you only really have Drill Pack, but that's pretty good, because you crit pretty decently, and Gengar is pretty weak uh, physically. Other low kick, if you weren't using Thunderous Kick, like I said. That's pretty good. Thunderous Kick is amazing, the best move it has, and obviously Hyper Beam. And as usual, you gotta get rid of the ability so that it doesn't like activate in Gen 1. But yeah, unlike most fighting types, I feel like Gwarin Zapdos actually has a chance. And if he does have a chance, that immediately makes him super unique. Because, like, when have you ever seen like a, like a good fighting type in a uh, generation like, 1 overuse that isn't just, oh, we have Machamp now, but we just gave a close combat? You, you don't really see that. And I'm pretty sure even with like Sword and Shield and Scarlet and Violet, you don't even use Thunderous Kick, because I'm pretty sure it's still just inferior to uh, close combat. So yeah, like a metagame where like you just use Glorian Zapdos how it was intended, be really fast, hit things with Thunderous Kick, would be good. Um, let's find out together, shall we? Always oh, gotta start off with the boy, Tauros. And Blizzard, it... Like, I... It's not really the best thing. Like, it does, like... I guess it does half. And with the crit, it does more. But I don't think Tauros wants to risk it. Thunder Risk Kick does way too much damage to you. And that defense job is mostly meaningless for Zapdos. But... It can still come in handy if, like, let's say, like, something else, like, kills Zapdos, or you need something else to revenge kill Tauros. It obviously doesn't matter which uh, variant of Snorlax it is. Doesn't matter if it's Amnesia Wax, Reflect, Self Destruct. Like, Thunderous Kick does way too much damage. And that defense drop means that Chansey and Snorlax, they just don't have any way to, like, defend against you. Like, yeah, they can go for, like, Paralysis, and maybe they can go for, like, Reflect. But you just have agility to negate that, and then you have Thunderous Kick to work the defense. So there's truly nothing that either one of them can do. So it's a free matchup, 100%. Which, uh, yeah, you don't really get that in Gen 1 too often. Which, as you can probably tell already, this is a big deal. But obviously, Normal isn't just the only type in Generation 1. There's also, um, you know, Psychic types. And you can survive one hit for like an Alakazam and some others, which, that's like, I mean, to be fair, with a critical Hyper Beam, you can probably kill them, but they can also crit you just as well. So I really don't think it's a good matchup for you. And against Cloyster, it's weird. If you're using Cloyster, what exactly do you use? Do you use a super effective Blizzard, or do you go for Clamp? I think either way, Zapdos has a much better matchup, and like... Or if you go for Clamp, you just die. Because if you go for Clamp, you might get some chip damage in. But then, like, as soon as they get freed, they just kill you with Thunderous Kick. So you kind of have to go for Blizzard. But even then, I just don't think it's worth it. 
But also, what do you switch in for Zapdos in? And also there, as you see, like, Drill Pick does a lot more damage than I would have expected to do with Executor, to be honest. But I guess it is much more powerful than Cantonia Zapdos' um, Drill Pack. And yeah, Executor is still a big threat. However, it kind of has to put you asleep. Because it can't one-shot you without a crit. So, if that Sleep Powder misses, Galarian Zapdos just gets a free kill, basically. So, Executor... It uses Sweet Powder, but this is one of the few times where it doesn't feel comfortable. It actually feels very nervous, almost like you're like a Gengar using Hypnosis. Speaking of which, uh, yeah, Gengar doesn't need Hypnosis. It just has a really easy matchup against Zapdos. Now granted, Zapdos can do some like pretty good chip damage to you, but Gengar has a better chance of critting. And not to mention, uh, it just uses... Well, I guess it can go either way, but... I don't know, like, Gengar can very easily switch into Zapdos, and Zapdos only has Drill Pack. Well, Gengar can have, like, Psychic, Thunderbolt, or just try to put it to sleep. It has a lot of options. So it definitely has a better matchup, even though it can probably just go either way. Yeah, Jolteon, like, what do you really expect to do here? You just die. Although I will say... Because of Thunderous Kick having a 100% chance to lower defense, it means that even if you resist it, nothing truly wants to, like, stay in on him. Um, or not stay in, like, switch into Glorian Zapdos. Because Glorian Zapdos can, like, with the, it probably can and will survive any super effective special move you throw at it. So if it already gets, like, a free turn of you switching in to lower defense, it means that with a Hyper Beam or another Thunderous Kick or Drill Pack, it can do some serious damage to you. So even when it doesn't get any KOs, it can like seriously like whittle down your team. And then against Rhydon, the strongest physical tank, even without defense drop, it gets us a solid, um, you know, two hood KO. And then Rock Sway does like nothing to you, so it's a a a really free matchup. I guess that actually is one thing to think about with the Gengar matchup. Like, switching in the Gengar is probably one of the most predictable things ever. Which means that Glorian Zapdos has a better chance of getting a free hit on Gengar than Gengar does having a hit on it. Okay, I kind of might have to change the viability rankings, but I really don't want to, and you're going to see why later. And I think this is, a, this is a lose. Like, Zapdos, like, yeah, it gives agility to, like, negate Thunder Wave. But what does that really accomplish, like, really? Nothing really. You just sort of die anyways. Swarbo just... It's... Yeah, it's not a good matchup. Like, maybe if Thunderous Kick was like literally any other type of move other than fighting. But then again, it being fighting is what makes it interesting in the first place. So yeah, but I don't think anyone's really surprised about that. Just like no one's gonna be surprised about this one. Uh, Starmie versus Zapdos. How do you think it's gonna go? Like, yeah, the defense drop means that Hyper Beam can like seriously threatening you and yeah you can like do damage to star that's for sure but it's faster has recover paralyzes and other than surf it's other main three attacking moves blizzard psychic and thunderbolt all hit you for super effective so it's not a good matchup at all and then finally we have the legendary birds starting with articuno blizzard hits really hard but Thunderous Kick makes it easier for you. But if you miss, it's good. It's like free real estate. Very nice. But that is how much... Uh, yeah. Uh, Zapdos got very lucky there. But most matchups against Articuno aren't going to be that lucky. It's... Articuno will just easily take it with just two Blizzards. And then against Moltres, it's interesting. Because both of them really want to use agility. But I feel like... Um... Or... Okay, Guarian Zapdos is faster, which definitely makes Fire Spin, like, less effective. And then Thunderous Kick can, like, whittle you down, but I'm honestly not sure if it's enough or not. In fact, I made this replay yesterday, so I'm not entirely sure. Although, one thing I do need to do right now is I need to challenge myself with my ult. Because the replay for, um, uh, against Zapdos got corrupted. So, let's go custom game. Alright, the challenge is going to be ready. Also, as you saw there, 
uh, Zapdos took out Moltres. So while uh, Articuno is mostly a loss for Glorian Zapdos, it has a much better chance against uh, Cantonian Moltres because you're faster. And it mostly just wants to spam like Spire Fire Spin against you. I guess it's something else to think about too. I guess Glorian Zapdos is like, unlike some of the other birds, which are either just a late game mod or just like good for like, you know, just being Zapdos. Like, you know. I don't, I'm not sure where Glorian Zapdos best fits in as like a lead or just a late game cleaner. Because as you saw, it does like, it can immediately threaten like both Chansey and Snorlax. Like to an insane degree. But it also makes you wonder if that just makes it a perfect revenge killer instead. Who knows? All I know is that we got we got something to show you. Zapdos versus Zapdos. But I don't think the outcome's gonna really surprise you. Unless I get a crit. Yeah. Yeah, I have to I have to do replays a lot because sometimes that happens. Which like not that it's like super unrealistic. But I think you always want to see how much a non-crit does first, you know? So let's try that again. So yeah, Thunderous Kick does like nothing to you. Thunderbolt does... Like, no one surprises all so much more. And yeah, you can do like a good chunk with like a Defense Shop and Hyper Beam. But normal Zapdos just takes it real easily. So yeah, that's unfortunate. But uh, it's Contonian Zapdos. And here is the viability ranking. And oh my gosh. Um this is easily the most well rounded of all of them. Although two of these I like, got mixed up. I think yeah, I'm not sure why those were mixed up. But honestly, I think I like this a lot. Like some of these could be changed, but I really don't want to. Because I think having three Pokemon every tier is really funny. But, um, yeah, this is also part of the reason why I, um, why I enjoyed, like, making this video so much. Because if you get Gorian Zapdos, it's by far the most well-rounded well out of all of the mods I've covered. Which, that's really cool. Now, is it better than Cantonian Zapdos? It probably wouldn't. Although, it would be like comparing apples to oranges. It would really suck that you can only use one of them because of Species Claws. However, I don't think it's really right to call one inferior, because they do very different things, and what um, Cantonian Zapdos does is very different from Glorian Zapdos. But one thing I will say is that the niche that Glorian Zapdos does, he does and performs far better than Cantonian Zapdos. Zapdos can like scare a lot of stuff, paralyze things, and they can't really do much to it. But the three Pokemon that Glorian Zapdos beats it is, like, these are, like, some of the most used Pokemon ever. Like, this is already the top, like, two and three. And the fact that they get destroyed so easily would shape the metagame in ways unimaginable. I still think Tauros would probably still be the best Pokemon. But there is a real possibility that this would create a huge power vacuum to where Psychic becomes the best uh, type in the game. Because we finally have a normal type that can very easily answer them. Or maybe not. Because obviously in a hypothetical, like, we add all three Galarian birds at the same time. Not just Zapdos, and not just Articuno. So we have a fighting type that can handle the Psychics, or the Normals pretty well. You know, because Thunderous Kick handles Normal. You already know this. But what's going to happen tomorrow? when we have an actual Dark type with an actual Dark type move. Hmm. I wonder how that's going to change the meta. Well, if you want to find out how Galarian Moltres does, uh, come back here tomorrow when I do what a Galarian Moltres was in Gen 1 OU. Thank you for watching. If you have any suggestions, let me know. And what do you think? Would Galarian Zapdos be great? I am personally convinced it would be overused. What do you think? Do you disagree with this viability ranking right here? I understand if you do. But, uh, yeah. Mm, I don't have much else to say. I just had a lot of fun making this one. Thank you for watching. My name is Groundback, and I look forward to hearing from you.